been wanting to do a little walk around video of my Land Rover Discovery and I decided to come out here into the desert and maybe try to do it all in one take. I don't know, maybe I'll be able to do it, maybe not. But it's fairly quiet out here and I figured I'd just go over all the stuff that I've done to this thing. People have asked about it from my other YouTube videos, so here we go. First of all, I think we should start with the front, naturally. I just put these new Hella lights on. Hella value fits. I got a review of those on my blog. They're pretty awesome. I like them a lot. They fit right in this bull bar nicely. And then I went with this Goliath bumper. I find that it's uh, it tucks in real nice. It's not overbearing. I know a lot of people love that Safari Guard or ARB bumper. The giant bars everywhere, but I can't stand it. Actually, I sold one. I had the Safari Guard. Sold it. Happily. Uh, I know, controversial. But anyway, this bumper is the only, and the lights are the only things I actually bought, like retail for this vehicle. The rest of the parts on this truck all came off of another discovery that I bought for 3500 bucks. So I've got the, uh, you see in here, a super winch, EP9, some shackles, custom splice uh, fair lead, and synthetic line on that winch. Those came off uh, the other, the 2004 that I have. And so, I mean, one of the most striking things about this is the uh, the finish. It's um, it's a Raptor liner and the color is Sarge Green, which is actually a Jeep color, which, you know, it's kind of bad to put a Jeep color on a Land Rover, but I really like the color. I think I came out nice. And something to notice about this, and I don't know if you can pick it up really, but the texture on here is really, really fine. Like I did a lot of research on how to do that. I didn't like that globby texture. So I, I misted the whole vehicle on the second coat, which uh, made that, that texture really fine. And it, it just looks kind of unique. It doesn't look like a globby bed liner. So the next uh, kind of striking feature are the tires. And these are 285, 75, 16 Cooper Discover uh, STT Pros. Really like this tire. Again, these came off the 2004 that I bought. Uh, yeah, they're doing really well. Got a lot of tread on them. They're not super noisy. They're not quiet, but they're not obnoxious. Really like these tires. And to make those tires possible, we have a... Uh, a what is it the uh, heavy duty two inch old man emu lift with the nitro charger sport shocks steering stabilizer as well and i know I also i have the lucky eight quick disconnect sway bar which interestingly i leave disconnected almost 90 percent of the time and i don't notice it if i go on a highway trip or something i'll reconnect that just just for safety but honestly a day-to-day -day driving on just meaning like surface streets and stuff i don't even notice it um so i know a lot of people say you can't fit 33 inch tires on the two inch lift but you totally can and i have zero rubbing none i can stuff stuff these tires in those wheel wells and i don't have any rubbing at all so i don't know i don't know why that is i don't have bump stop i don't hit the uh i don't hit the uh, steering stops on the uh or the tires rather on the arms none of that i don't have any of that problem i don't know why interestingly the 2004 that i took this lift off of did so maybe my steering stops just happened to be adjusted right i don't know but that's the lift and oh yeah so another nice little feature is the actual original mantec snorkel made of metal and it goes inside the fender not outside the fender i really can't stand that look and it faces the correct way in my opinion it doesn't look like uh walk like an egyptian you know that whole ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah it's that's goofy looking to me but i mean functional so next up we've got some i believe these are safari guard rock sliders I'm not entirely sure whatever they are they're very beefy they only attach the body they don't actually attach to the frame 
but it, it's double uh, it's double steel over both sides of the rocker, so I don't think those are going to go anywhere. I'm not real worried about that. Then I put the 2004 crossbar or the uh, roof rack bars on it because this is a 2003, so that was cool. Also, I read it all. I bought new plastic for the A pillars. This came with the 2004. It was nice and new. All this plastic was rotted out. Repainted the door handles, replaced this, and here's where I'm like, weird spot here. So I have this bumper. This is the Greg Davis, Greg Davis steel bumper, and this thing is bomb proof. I don't love it though. It's very not really, I don't know, uh, it's not very easy to work with. It was extremely difficult to get on and it just looks kind of goofy i know that this isn't supposed to terminate here there's supposed to be a steel piece that runs along and you cut all this off i didn't i didn't get that steel piece so i'm still not entirely sure what i'm going to do with this quarter panel hanging like this i might do a, just a, a slight cut down here i'm not sure i'm just leaving it for now because i don't really care uh, another thing i have is this half roof rack it's uh it's like called a backpack rack. It was something custom made from a guy on Disco Web, and there's a big controversy and a huge forum thread about these things and how he ripped all these people off. I don't know. Uh, I happen to have one. It's pretty awesome because it, uh, it it's perfect for my rooftop tent in combination with the uh, the crossbars up there. Like the rooftop tent just sits straight across it, and it it just works out great. So, what else? Oh yeah, the, anybody knows when you put bigger tires on these, the spare tire carrier doesn't work because your tire will hit your bumper. This is, I don't remember what brand it is. It's not the Atlantic British one, it's some other one. Uh, but it's a, it's a lifted tire rack, so uh, it's a 33 inch tire, got plenty of clearance there, which is great. Also have... Uh, the aluminum gas tank skid plate that came off the other one. I've got these reverse lights that I put in there just because once you remove the factory rear bumper, you don't have any reverse lights anymore, which is not good. Not that you can see behind you backing up at one of these anyway, because you can't really with that tire there. What else on the exterior here? Uh, I've got weld in diff guards but i haven't put them on yet i gotta do those still uh just did the brakes you can even see the yeah uh, backing paste stuff there and here's what's nice about the raptor liner see i just just dragged it across a tree i licked my finger and i just wiped that it's gone like the pinstriping is very minimal on this thing like it you have more tree in the texture and it just wipes out so it doesn't actually damage the finish very often there are some areas where i do have some damage that's not it but there are a few areas where it didn't quite rub off but i'd say 90 percent of the time the tree pinstriping type stuff just rubs right off it's the only place where i screwed up and i bumped it with a gas pump so that was metal and that really messed that up but anyway that's the exterior. And yeah, I made sure I did my emblems. It's kind of do a refinish job, just make your emblems look nice. So I just blacked those out and blacked out this front one too. Although, I feel like the land is a little too far away from the rover compared to how they usually are. But what I did is this is even and this is even. That's how I centered it up, but they should really be a little bit closer. But I don't think anybody's really gonna notice that except for everybody watching this video now. So moving on to the interior, nothing super special. You'll notice right away, red door jams. This was originally Alveston red. I haven't done the door jams yet. And I just, I didn't do them because I was on the fence about whether to Raptor line these or just paint them. I think I'm just gonna paint the door jams, but I don't know, I don't really care too much right now. It does look a little goofy. Uh, so inside, I've got blacked out headliner. It's just flat black paint, which worked out really well. It looks pretty awesome. Some patches, 
Uh, super duper cheap aftermarket stereo and a little phone mount that's great. Um, this does have a CDL if you want to know more about that. Check my channel, you'll see the other videos where I install that CDL. Also, Ultra Gauge, number one thing you should buy if you're going to own one of these. And then uh, these seat covers are awesome. Uh, they came with the 2004 that I bought too. They are uh, Knight's Bridge Overland seat covers. There's the, the name brand. They're really high quality. They've got the Molly patches on them. You've got a little Velcro up here, which is nice. So yeah. Also, I put in. Let's see, the camera's not gonna. Not gonna like this. It's pretty dark in here, but I put in a little USB outlet here for the kids so they can charge their devices while driving. Also. This guy here is a nice little USB outlet that I replaced the cigarette lighter with. Really like that. Oh yeah, got a Levo gauge. If you're wondering a good place to mount your Levo gauge, this is a good one. I saw that in a, a picture somewhere on a forum. Some guy had it there and I was like, dude, that's, that's the perfect place to mount it. So that's what I did. Uh, so nothing interesting in the back seats. They're just factory stuff. If you open the gate here. This is a little unique, so I've got these, and this came off the 2004 that I bought. Uh, the guy I bought it from had this done, and these little shelves are like a cutting board material, and they just fold down. Pretty cool, pretty useful uh, when you're, you know, camping and stuff, and using the rooftop tent. And usually I'll have my my uh, 12 volt refrigerator back here, and you know, kitchen stuff. So, but back here is pretty stock. I mean, what's really nice about these discoveries. You have these bins. I have a ton of recovery gear in these bins. Amazing how much you can fit in these things. Now I've got a toe strap. I've got a uh, tree saver. All kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff to fit in those. It's awesome. Love that about these uh, these trucks. Um, what else have I got going on here? We have um, oh yeah, onboard an onboard ARB. A single pump so that's down here actually so it's kind of cool you just pop this off there's your ARB outlet plug your hose into there got the switch and I like this because it's not mounted outside you know under the hood with all the heat I much prefer it to be inside the vehicle where it's not you know hot 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 all the time I live in the desert as you can see it gets very very hot here so nice to have that mounted in a place where it's not getting beat by the heat okay so under the hood I don't really have I mean these these Land Rovers are pretty pretty uh, standard as far as under hood mods go Let's see if I can do this all with one hand Okay, so something I do have going on here is this fancy, I think it's car, yeah, Cars 4x4 Reservoir. This is a nice upgrade because the plastic ones eventually, eventually they will break. And you don't want to be going down the highway on a road trip in the middle of nowhere and that plastic one breaks. This actually came off the 2004 that I bought, so I didn't, didn't actually buy this uh, by itself, but um, really nice the only problem with it as you can see splash marks all over it is it has a little vent hole up here and when it, when you get into really rough off-roading and you're slouch, sloshing it side to side a little bit of coolant will drip out of that hole so i gotta i gotta put like a like a little hose on here and just point it up so they can still vent but it won't slosh around also, I've done, you know, all the service work. This thing has 71,000 miles on it now. Did the 60,000 mile service. So, also have this nice aluminum T fitting, which is also a nice uh, uh, fix for a weak point on the Land Rovers. And I have that gray thermostat down there, which highly recommend, but make sure you get the right one. It is the, I think it's the Land Rover, actual OEM, gray. 180 degree soft spring thermostat. Very, very important. Um, under here, 
I have not the most beautiful arrangement of wiring, but that winch uh, has had a control box on top of it, which would have been right right here, and I would have had to cut the grill out and everything to make it fit. And I just I really don't like doing that. So instead, what I did is I wired the winch up into this box that's normally used for the spare tire stuff on a Land Rover and works out really well it's you know out of the way it's not in the elements anymore and it doesn't you know makes it so i don't have to cut the grill so then i just have this right here on the front of this guy plug in the winch to use the controller maybe i'll wire something inside later but for now this works um let's see what else we have here yeah the snorkel Oh, so this piece here is a little bit of a reinforced piece rather than the standard Land Rover plasticky one. A little bit stronger for that air intake going into there and then the snorkel you know, feeds into here. I have to, I have to silicone this because this doesn't seal the snorkels on this side and there's no, there's not a, it's not an airtight or watertight seal until you silicone it, which I have yet to do. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Man, it doesn't sound like much. I feel like I've been working on this thing for such a long time. And it feels like a small list of things, but I tell you, there's a lot of work went into this truck. And it's really paying off for me and, and my family, really enjoying it, having a good time with it. And it's just nice to be out on the trail in something that's not a Jeep or a Toyota. It's different. Not that I have anything against Jeeps or Toyotas, but they're kind of everywhere and that's for a good reason i mean they're great but i don't know i like having something a little bit different and this is a little bit different and they are great off-road so yeah that's just a quick little walk around of my discovery too if you have any questions uh, about it shoot me a, a comment down below um, if you if you like this video uh, click the like button if you didn't like this video click the like button twice see what i did there uh, if you have any questions uh, like i said just uh, shoot me a, a comment and be happy to answer them and i'll probably be putting out more videos about this uh, vehicle they seem to be getting a little more popular lately i think it's because they're an affordable off-road vehicle and people are interested in them so if you are let me know. Thanks.